So we're here at looking at the surface we want to prime and paint and prep. And the most important thing to look at at this stage is to what degree of dirt, grime, fingerprints, if there's any trace of mildew, crayons, anything else that could hinder the performance of the priming and the paint. Now the best thing to do is to look at the walls and see what we're, we're dealing with here. This particular wall looks like we have some degree of dirt and fingerprints. Um, we don't really see a presence of mildew, but if we did, we want to make sure in our mixture that we add a splash or two of bleach to remove the mildew. But this wall, it looks like we're dealing with fingerprints and grime, so our mixture is primarily going to consist of a light duty mixture with TSP and hot water. We're going to follow the directions here because you can increase or decrease this depending on the degree of grime on the wall. We always advocate using gloves, especially with bleach, but with the TSP, we'll use the gloves as well. Now what I'll do is I'll put approximately a quarter cup of light duty cleaning of TSP and mix that well to my hot water. Now we can use a sponge or a rag for this application. A sponge works well, but it's imperative that we don't saturate the rag or saturate the sponge because that could actually create more of a mess than needed. I'm going to begin with wiping the wall. With, I'm going to use about half of the sponge. I'm going to do the whole wall, but I'm going to spend more time on the areas that I see need it. Um, I should probably talk about TSP. It's an all-purpose heavy-duty cleaner. TSP is great for most of the dirt and grime that's on the walls. However, there are still some stains that will linger, such as smoke and water. And we can solve those problems and address those problems with the appropriate primer and make sure they're sealed up good so they won't bleed through our subsequent coats of paint. When cleaning, I recommend starting in the middle of the wall, working away up and down. If we start down below, we have an excess of water and it'll probably drip on your baseboard. I want to point out that it's most important to exercise caution around any outlets or any light switches. This is why I chose to leave the outlet covers on in case there was any trace of water around them. I want to exercise extreme caution because obviously we could have problems if any of the water were to come in contact with the electricity. Now that I've washed this entire wall, I'd like to work with a little fresh water, hot water, just to remove any residual TSP that might be on the wall. It's good practice to turn your sponge so you're always working with a clean surface. And I really don't want to use, I can't emphasize enough, too much water here. We're just, we're just rinsing with clean water. And if we use excess water, that really affects our dry time. Now that we've determined that our surface is completely dry, the next step is to sand the walls. I like to use a large sanding sponge that comes in a medium grip. The reason why we do this is twofold. It's to knock off any gloss that might be on the wall, also to knock down any imperfections from previous paint jobs. There might be drips, any high and low spots. So we're going to take this sponge, lightly sand the entire wall. After we're done sanding our walls, the next thing we want to do, we want to remove any of the surface dust that's left on the wall from our sanding. And the best tool to do that is a tack cloth. These are available at paint and hardware stores. And they're perfect for picking up surface dust. I want to open up the tack cloth and make it into a semi-soft ball that fits into the palm of my hand easily. And this will pick up any surface dust or residue that's left over from sanding. You can see all the dust it's picking up. And there's nothing left on the walls. Now that our walls have been sanded, cleaned, and tack cloth, this is a good time to make sure that they're 100% dry. We can do this by a hand test and a visual test. And this is also a perfect time to see if there's any remaining stains that will need specific primers to block them for our subsequent paint coats. Once we've done that, we're ready to move on to the next step.